The Last Fallen Fortress, Edivan. The tragedy and loss of South Caucasus began with Peter the Great, who envisioned expanding the Russian Empire with massive settlements of Armenians while allowing the deportation of Muslims, especially Sunnis, into the Ottoman Empire. The Empress of Russia, Catherine II, who continued the politics of Peter the Great, also supported Armenians living in Persia and the Ottoman Empire. In 1828, Russia finalized its expansion in the South Caucasus, ushering in the fall of the last independent Azerbaijani Hanates, Erevan and Nakhchivan, along with the Turkmencha Treaty. 1828 also bore witness to more Armenians from Iran and Ottoman Turkey settling in Erevan and Karabakh's Hanates in Georgia and Crimea. We present to you now a short narrative that demonstrates and acknowledges the history of Erevan, the capital of Erevan Hanate. The first ever recorded state in the territory of Erevan Hanate goes back to the ancient state Urartu. According to historians, the leading ethnic group in Urartu was Huris. The language of Urartu had a different language structure than that of the Indo-European language group, including Armenian and Kurdish. Archaeology and ancient history professor Paul Zemansky asserts that any attempt to link the Uatran ethnic composition to one single ethnic group is misleading and it would be an historical anomaly. Instead, he states that Urartu was a composite of different ethnic groups such as Kalibis, Kaladohoi, Takohoi, Scythians and Persians in the area. Zemansky goes on to suggest that large foreign population groups were settled in a given place in Uratian territory, including the likes of 6,600 captives from Hatti and Supani in Erebuni. He argues that the lack of one ethnic composition was a leading cause of Urartu's rapid fall. Historians believe that since the ancient times, different Turkic-speaking tribes like Subar, Arbimitan and Hurimitan also lived in this region from 3000 to 1000 BCE. In the 10th to 8th centuries BCE, these lands belonged to Urartu. Later in the 7th century BCE, the Saka Kinarian or Saga Gamer and Garamans, Karamans or Kipchak tribes settled in Armenia. Archaeological findings suggest that the building traditions at Urartu sites resemble those in the south, including Nakchivan, Kiltepe, and the lower levels at Haji Firus and Tidketepe. The examination of early Kurgans in the region also suggests the striking resemblance with the Kurgan-style burials in Central Asia and in Eastern Turkey. The Indo-European ethnos Hays immigrated to the region later on, but their numbers were significantly lower compared to other tribes. These Hay tribes would go on to adopt the name Armenia, which in Kipchak meant the courageous men. However, despite historical facts, the falsification of history has been supported by the Soviets for political reasons. The first person who tried to present such a claim in the academic world was Boris Petrovsky, who wanted to please his Armenian wife. After his false statement in 1968, Armenians celebrated the 2750th anniversary of Yerevan, proclaiming to the world that the city of Yerevan was 30 years older than ancient Rome. Referring to Moses of Chorene's work, History of Armenia, which Western scholar Robert Thompson and Austrian-American scholar Otto Menkenhelfe criticized for inaccuracies and distortions, some Armenian historians further claimed that the name Erevan was associated with the Armenian-speaking prophet Noah, and that Noah's Ark came to rest on top of Mount Ararat during the Great Flood. They stated that when the water receded, Noah saw a dry land, and he exclaimed, Yerevan, which in Armenian means, appeared. Now, you might be wondering if these claims have ever been supported by others, or are even accepted by Armenians themselves. Consider this quote from Armenian writer Kachatur Abovyan, who in a brief historical essay on the city of Erevan, said that according to a popular legend, the name Yerevan is derived from the Armenian Tsar Ervan, or from the words Yerevil, Yerevan, i.e. saw, appeared, and allegedly named it when Noah first saw the land from the summit of Ararat in these places, i.e. in the city. This is a complete fabrication 
In fact, the city became famous in 1441 during the reign of Jahashan, after the Persians conquered it. From that time until 1827, Yerevan was occupied by both Persians and Turks and passed from one nation to another. The city of Yerevan and its districts, including the last Yerevan chief, were conquered by the Turks at different times by 10 pashas and 33 khans by the Persians. According to Turkish traveler geographer Evliya Chalabi, the city of Yerevan was established by one of Amir Temur's merchants called Kajahan Lahijani, which before him was a small settlement. Later on, Jahan Shah of Garaguyandu built one of the most prominent monuments in Yerevan. During his time, the center of the Armenian Katolikosek was also transferred from Cilicia to the Uchkilsa Monastery in the village of Bagar Shabbat, Chuhur Sad Emirate. During the Shefavid state rule, Shah Ismail ordered his vizier Ravan Guluhan to build the Yerevan fortress in 1509 and the construction took seven years. During this period, the ethnic composition of the population of the Yerevan Hanate consisted of Ohus Turkic tribes, including Bayat, Afsher, Sadlu, Baharlu, Bayandur, Gachar, Shamlu, Rumlu, Ustagla, Tikla, Ayrumla, and Muhanla. These tribes left behind many monuments. One example is in Uzunoba, or in present-day Argavand, which is located south of Zvartnots airport. It's a large Turkmen funerary monument with Arabic inscription dating back to 1413. In the 17th century, the city temporarily belonged to the Ottoman Empire. After the assassination of Nader Shah Afsheher in 1747, the Yerevan Hanate emerged. During this time, the city of Yerevan flourished and Yerevan Hans erected many mosques, caravanseras, baths, and recreation parks. Drinking water was brought to the city from the Kirkbulakh Plateau and Yerevan became a land of gardens. Although the earthquake on June 4, 1679 destroyed nearly all the buildings in the city, the city was soon reconstructed with support from Nakhchivan, Genje, Karabakh, Tabriz and Baku. The city of Yerevan was also famous for the Hans Palace or Serdar's Palace which was built by Yerevan chief Amir Gunahan Gajar. Later on, Irivan Han Hussein Ali Han restored it with unique architectural design. Hussein Ali Han also ordered the construction of the Guy or Guk Jami. In Turkic, Guk means sky blue. The mosque portal and minaret encompassed fine tile work, a fountain, and stately elm trees with rooms all around it. The mosque also had a school. In 1791, Muhammad Ali Han Hussein Ali Han's son built the Guj Gulu Hall and the palace's summer building Shushaband. During this period, the city of Irivan consisted of four massifs, Gala Shahari, or Old City, Tepe Bashush, which is now called Kond, and Demir Bulach, now called Kedentigak. Between the castle and other residential areas was the market square. The urban quarter stretched along the right bank of the Gurkbulakh River to the Irivan fortress. The city's central market and all the squares, many caravanseras and baths were located in this part as well. Tepe Bashush neighborhood was located on a hill between Zengi River and Shaheri neighborhood. The city was also famous for its gardens. Hussein Guluhan's famous garden and summer pavilion was located on the right bank of the Zengi River. The city's Demir Bulak neighborhood, which included Jafer Bey Mosque and baths, Hesen Ali Bas, and Susuj Karavanserai was located in southeast Shaheri neighborhood. The Yerevan fortress was strategically located between the Ottoman Empire and the Gajar state, and thus it was of great importance to Russia. Russians made several attempts to capture the fortress of Yerevan in 1804 and again in 1808. The population of the fortress bravely defended the city against Russian forces for more than 20 years. However, it did collapse on October 1st, 1827, marking the start of the dark days of Irivan Hanate. After the occupation, Alexander I of Russia allowed many Armenians to resettle in Astrakhan, Kozlar, Mozdok, Derbend, and also in Borchala, Lori, 
Tulavi, and Signac region. On March 21st of 1828, Nicholas I of Russia issued a decree on forming the Armenian province Oblast on the territories of Erevan and Nakhchivan Hanates. According to Soviet historian Nikolai Shmirnov, altogether 90,000 Armenians migrated from Persia and 75,000 from the Ottoman Empire. In 1829 to 1830, about 40,000 Armenians were settled in Akalalaki from the Ottoman Empire. The resettlements of Ottoman and Iranian Armenians in the Caucasus continued until the 1920s. The historical documents maintain that before the resettlement, the region was inhabited by 290 Armenians and 1,632 Muslims. However, by 1897, the number of Armenians rapidly reached 1 million. In the years 1915 and 1916, more than 300 to 400,000 Ottoman Armenians settled in the Erevan province. According to author Brad Kislin, who penned Rediscovering Armenia, an archaeological touristic gazetteer and map set for the historical monuments of Armenia, shortly after 1900, Armenians became a majority even in the city of Yerevan itself. In his Sketches of Transcaucasian Life, Russian bureaucrat I. Kenedpev communicates that Armenian illegal seizure of land belonging to the treasury and private individuals has also contributed to their enrichment. These aspirations were especially evident in the 1850s and 60s. The capture of state plots happened very easily and certainly not without the knowledge of officials of the administration. However, resettlements were not the only way to increase the Armenian population in the Irivan region. Genocide and massacres were also used to reduce the number of Azerbaijanis in the region. In 1905, Armenian terrorist groups such as Dashnakstan started the genocide against Azerbaijanis in Baku, Nakhchivan, Irivan, and Zengezur. In 1917 and 1918, these terrorist organizations expanded the massive destruction of Azerbaijanis in Irivan and surrounding regions. In Zengezur, they murdered more than 10,000 Azerbaijanis, 50,000 more became refugees. In Irivan, with 199 villages, these terrorists killed 135,000 Azerbaijanis. The genocide against Azerbaijanis simultaneously occurred in Karabakh, Baku, Guba, Lenkeran, Shirvan, and other parts of Azerbaijan and included the genocide of Jush, Lesgis, and Talushis as well. However, the world was silent to the suffering of Azerbaijanis. Robert Scotland Liddell, a British journalist, reported that most of the rumors are concocted in Moscow and then released into circulation. He believed that if it were not for the Armenians' subversive activities, it would be possible for the two peoples to live side by side in peace. During the Soviet occupation, Armenians started armonizing many ancient Turkish names of villages, cities, valleys, etc., such as Chigun, Duyun, Karkan, Ingawa, Garaguyanlu, Garatorpak, Zenjirli, Zimi, Garabaklar, Ermik, Mankur, Shahabla, Gatsahur, Gashka, Garagun, Baiburd, and Kotuz Hortuz. In their article, The Ohus Nations of Motherland, or Yorden Ohus Eleri, Israfil Bagarov and Velayadin Aliyev, who are professors of the Nakhchivan Pedagogical University, were able to record some of these names which they traced back to ancient Turkish manuscripts, including the book of Dede Gorgud, or Chitabi Dada Gorgud, a heroic epic poem of the Ohus, which is a Turkic tribal group. For example, Garagun was the name of Ohus commander Garagun. Duyun was the name of two villages in former Garmarli, which later on was renamed Artishat. Duyar Deyer was one of the villages in Armenia, but it was also the name of an Ohus tribal head. Also, the name Sunuk is a well-recorded geographical name which belonged to the Turkish population of Caucasian Albania and Ohus tribes. The population who lived in the region was Caucasian Albanian tribes, specifically Kupchak Turks. The ancient gravestone which was found in the Ohrud village of Sisyan district of Armenia belonged to Agvan Ugavan, 
Agvan was also a well-recorded Alban Turkish name. The geographical location Uz, as per B.B. Bartold, represented Uzhan or Uhuzhan. Israfil Bagarov and Vilayadin Aliyev note that when they passed by the destruction of the village of Ingala, the place reminded them of the old folk song, Ingalab, Ingalab. It keeps breaking down, breaking down. Who will stay here then? As if God has heard it, and made Ingalab remain silent forever. During the Soviet occupation, Moscow continued supporting the cultural and physical genocide of Azerbaijanis in Armenia. Bahadur Guyabov and Kis Ling note that in 1988 to 89, the last Azerbaijani villages also became a subject of ethnic cleansing. Tens of thousands of Azerbaijanis were brutally murdered and 300,000 Azerbaijanis were deported from Armenia. Unfortunately, all historical settlements and buildings and archaeological findings of Azerbaijanis were subject to massive cultural genocide in the historical lands of the Irvan Hanateh.